Hello again and welcome to another episode of trying to see me rebuilding this Maserati by Turbo Spider. And from what you can see here, one, two and three are the remaining parts that lie in the garage. Uh, everything else has been sent to be prepped for spraying. The remaining items are the rear and front bumper along with the bonnet or hood, whatever you want to call it. And the car is right now ready to be sprayed. So all the Preparations have been done and now the next job comes from the sprayer himself So you might ask yourself what do you expect to see from the upcoming videos? So first and foremost what you expect to see is the whole rebuild of the engine along with the rebuild of the gearbox Rebuilding of the turbos rebuilding of the rear differential rebuilding of the wishbones rebuilding of the shock absorbers and All in all I have to assemble these together and after all assembling these together, I have to put them into the car. And after putting them into the car, I have to make sure that everything is aligned and working. So that is pretty much what you expect to see. Uh, apart from that, there will be also some custom modifications such as the uh, exhaust. Now what I did with the exhaust is I made a custom free flow exhaust from scratch. Let's say full stainless system. Also along with that I balanced it out with the induction so I changed the part of which the air flows uh, the induction is much more free now so all in all this car is changed for the better hopefully I eliminated most of the gremlins that come along with the electrics of this car and a lot of mechanical issues that there was uh, within the car so what I'll be doing is I'll be continuing from where I left off back from 2013. I will compile the videos in a certain order that will make sense and hopefully get you back to speed onto the present day. So with that, hope you'll enjoy the upcoming videos and stay tuned for more updates. Thanks again for watching. Okay, so taking a look at videos from 2013, here we can see us a fully assembled piston and by the looks of it you can clearly see that it's filled with all sorts of grime and grit. Now, these carbon deposits will affect the car's overall performance and for that, this piston needs to be cleaned up from top to bottom. So in doing so, I need to take it apart to its main components, these being the major one which is the connecting rod which links the piston head to the crankshaft and along with that I need the gauging pin or wrist pin which connects the connecting rod to the piston head. Now here I have as the piston head which is filthy inside and out so it needs to be cleaned out thoroughly. So to do so I need these brushes and these brushes are there to clean the head but mostly the grooves for where the rings sit. Now when cleaning the components of the piston, I came up with a simple design, such as this, made out of two kitchen utensils, one being a plastic basin, which I filled with diesel, and the other is a colander, which is a perforated bowl used to strain off any liquid from solids. So in this case, the solids will be the components of the piston. And what I'll do is I'll be scrubbing them off, cleaning them, and any gunk that will fall will pass through the holes of the perforated bowl and then I can just lift it off when I'm done and just take the components out so I can rinse them off and dry them out. Now before I took the piston apart I noticed that on the connecting rod there is a mark so I used that mark as a reference point as you can see here and I also marked the gauging pin as you can see over there and I marked the piston head right over there so with that I can easily reassemble the piston 
the way it was when I disassembled it. So the main reason for me to disassemble it is to clean it properly and inspect the components that make up the piston. So if there's anything worn out, I can easily take note of it and replace whatever is necessary. So here we have the piston fully assembled and it's clear to see that it's difficult to clean these areas which are unaccessible to clean if the piston is not taken apart. So after a considerable amount of cleaning, here's the end result. It's a shiny piston cleaned from top to bottom. Everywhere has been cleaned and polished out. Along with that, the gadging pin has also been cleaned and polished out. And the connecting rod has been cleaned thoroughly from top to bottom, along with the lower end piece. Apart from cleaning the pistons themselves, I also had to clean the liners from the outside. Now these have been sent to be honed from the inside, all six of them. And what I came back with is this. Now this is not what I expected when I've sent it away to be honed. Uh, I've expected the guys at the engineering works to polish it the same way I did, right over here. But anyway, I have to do it myself. As for the pistons, this is the condition of which I found it when I pulled it out of the engine. And by the looks of it, it needs a proper clean up in order to keep a certain level of standard when building this engine, such as this one over here. Thus, by doing so, will ensure a good quality rebuild. When cleaning parts such as these over here, from time to time, you're gonna encounter a major issue. In this case, since the liners were not polished from the outside, upon cleaning them, this one over here seems to have a crack, which is very visible, all the way up to the scraper ring. Now, as you can see, the crack is not a surface crack, but a crack which is right through. This is very obvious once we take a look at the inside. Here we have us a very visible crack on the inside, so that shows that this sleeve is to be thrown out. This type of crack usually occurs when the metal has undergone excessive heat. In this case, most likely when the engine has overheated at some point in its life. So what I have to do now is I have to look for a new sleeve to replace this one. Okay, so upon cleaning this piston over here, I have encountered a minor issue which, as you can see, it regards some particles that have fallen in the combustion chamber and have scuffed the top piece of the piston head. It's a fairly minor issue, but the dents are clearly visible on this one.
Here's the end result after a considerable amount of polishing where the aim was to have the engine components as clean as possible. So this is what remains after I've cleaned the internal components of the engine. All this gunk lies here, but at least I'm glad I got rid of it. Now that all these parts have been cleaned, here is an example of how the piston should look like when reassembled. However, all the components still need to be cleaned from any diesel and smeared with some assembly lube to prevent any sort of contamination when stored away. Each item was individually cleaned off the diesel residue and smeared with some assembly loop. However, an issue had occurred when testing out the gauging pin onto the connecting rod bushing and found that there was an excessive amount of rocking motion which was clearly felt on some of the pistons. Now even though I don't have the tools to measure this, it was quite obvious that the bushes were slightly worn out. So these needed to be changed and I have ordered me a set of new connecting rod bushes along with some piston snap rings. These parts will be sent off to an engineering company because I do not have the precision tools to properly place these bushes onto the exact tolerances the gauging pin requires. And that's just about it for this time. So hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.